May, of course, is graduation month. Whether you have a high school graduate or a soon-to-be college graduate to buy for, we have for you today. Always nice to have Dan Thompson from Claris Networks on the show. Today we're talking computers and phones and where to put your money. That's right, that's right. It seems like a very popular gift around graduation, whether it be high school graduates going into college or recent college graduates going out in the workforce, uh, are pieces of technology. And so, very common question I get, especially this time of year and around Christmas as well, yeah. is, you know, hey, what should I buy? There's so many options, I have no idea what to do. So, uh, the three big ones, it seems like, are laptops, tablets, and then cell phones. Uh, and then, in those categories, there's just this full gamut of uh, prices that you could, you know, I mean, you basically spend as much money as you want to right um, the question though is is what is wise to spend money on and what can you kind of skimp on and save your dollars so uh, let's start with laptops okay. so that's kind of the easier the bigger the bigger spend uh, of the bunch so uh, if you have a graduate high school graduate getting ready to go into college obviously they're going to be doing lots of word processing lots of uh, you know research papers and stuff like that um, there's really two form factors today let me give you one of these I'll give you the big guy there okay. uh, so this is known as an ultrabook form factor, uh, and we call these hefty books just because they're massive. I don't even know how to. You've got open the it. back, there, the front oh. up here. <laughs> um, and so, that obviously, the so big fitting. difference uh, is size and weight. So you can tell just by messing around with that thing that it's, it's heavy. somewhat heavy. Uh, this one is a much lighter. Uh, but the interesting thing about the way technology has gone today is you can get just as much horsepower from a machine like this as you can a machine like that. So why would you want one like this? Great question. Uh, so that has, <laughs> Thank a, you. Yeah, it's good, it's like we planned it. Uh, so there, that, mon that uh, laptop has a 15 inch monitor. Uh, the Ultrabooks, the biggest you can get is a 14 inch monitor. So if I pop this guy open, um, you can see uh, not yeah. as big of a screen area. Some people care about that, some people don't. Uh, this is actually my personal laptop. You can see I've got probably food on there. Finger smudges on <laughs> yeah, there, yeah. So, um, but this is the one I use every day. And I personally just like it because it's it's light and sleek and mm -hmm. I like to travel and so I can bring this guy with me. Right. Traveling with that this is would heavy. be a very cumbersome affair. Right. So um, it really just comes down to also peripherals as well. So that has a CD player. This one you can't get one because there's just limited real estate. Okay. So um, things to think about like that. If your student is going to be taking the laptop to class, maybe mm -hmm. something a little bit more mobile. Okay. If you figure they'll stay at the desk more often, eh, maybe something bigger is fine. What about things like the way technology changes so much? So if you want to buy something yes. now and then hope that they can still use it four years later. That's right. That's right. Very common question as well. So the latest trend, so the fastest processors you can get today are called i7. You don't have to know what that means. Just kind of write a note down. i7 is the fastest processor you can get today. Um, if you hover around six gigs or or more of RAM. Again, you don't have to know what that means, just write it down. Um, those are good numbers to kind of hang out with. Those okay. will be good well into the future. Uh, if you're buying i5s or i3s, those are lower level processors, they're just not going to last as long because it's older technology. Okay. Uh, so i7 is a great place to stay. Okay, let's go from then laptops to tablets. Yes, yes. So tablets, this is, this is really more of a conversation of style almost. Um, do you care about the Apple logo or do you not care about the Apple logo? It's really, it's really almost a question of, uh, you know, do you write with your left hand or do you write with your right hand? The tablets, Android tablets and Apple tablets, mm -hmm. really from a functionality standpoint, are equal. Okay. Uh, you can find, you know, this one does this a little bit better, that one does that. But it's really irrelevant. Um, it's, it really just comes down to, do you like the Apple operating system or do you really just not care or do you prefer the Android? So uh, then it becomes a question of size. Do you want a big one? Do you want a small one? Mm -hmm. uh, and then budget. So where I find uh, budget to be an issue is definitely in the tablet market. The cheaper tablets and you can find them sometimes at department stores kind of sitting there right next to the register yeah they're like 99 bucks they're garbage okay. stay away from those uh, stick with the big name ones. so like this is a Samsung that we were showing right here on the screen um, stick with the bigger named tablets there you'll do fine and those will last quite a while like the original like the iPad 2s which mm -hmm. have been out for several years still an excellent tablet you can find one of those for good prices um, so it may be a thing where if I can't afford the brand newest one maybe go back a couple of versions mm -hmm. and it's still a good tablet still be very useful okay a minute left phones oh yes okay so now this is a great one too uh, is it worth spending $400 for a cell phone when I can get one for free just by signing a new contract uh, I would argue no it's not 
Uh, if you just don't care, if you're not like a tech geek like me, and you're just somebody who's wanting to get in the smartphone market or whatever, go ahead and get the free one, get the $99 one, get yourself into the smartphone world and experience it. You'll realize quickly what it does and doesn't do, and then you'll be able to make a more educated purchase in two years when your contract's up. Mm -hmm. uh, so like my wife is a great example. Uh, she just came from a standard cell phone to a smartphone. She's not a tech geek like me, has zero patience for this stuff. She got the free phone and mm -hmm. loves it. Like right. it would drive me crazy, but she loves it. Right. So if you're into it, get maybe the more expensive phone. If you're just wanting a smartphone because you feel like you need it or, or you should have one, go for the free one. Okay, and I guess if you're looking for a college graduate, probably they already have a phone anyway. Most likely, most uh, likely. But high school graduates, still probably the same thing, but if you go iPhone to iPhone in your family, that's right. then you can share back and forth. That's right, that's right, and I see that happen all the time. Kids get the hand-me-downs from the parents, and that's a perfectly good way to go about things because obviously, I mean, 600 bucks for a phone, 400 bucks, 200 bucks, it's just a lot of money for it's a phone. It's a lot of money. Especially for teenagers who are going to drop kick these things or drop them in the pool or That's whatever. That's why I like you. <laughs> All right, Claris Network's Dan Thompson, thank you so much. And Pomp and Circumstance can now play. Yes. Good to see you. <laughs> right. We're back with more right after this. Zip, zip, zip.